Hi everyone, welcome back to Pete's Garage. Well, we're ready to start building the 440. We're going to install the crankshaft. But before we do, let's talk a little bit about the difference, pros and cons, benefits of using studs versus bolts. Now mounting your main bearings and your main caps, there's a couple ways you can go. You can use a, a stud like I have here, or you could just use a regular bolt that would come with the engine. But let's take a quick look at what each one does and why you would choose a stud over a bolt. Alright, this is kind of it in a nutshell. When you have a stud, and the stud is installed in the block, whether you're using it for a head or for the main bearing, you're using it for a specific, specific purpose. And they're usually used in a heavy duty or a high performance application. And if you look at a, a stud, if you were installing this, the stud, when it's installed in the block, you are only installing this part of the thread. So when, when this is installed, this is the only part that sees stress. And it's usually only finger tight. Some of them, some manufacturers say end at 8 to 10 foot pounds. That's, that's foot pounds versus uh, finger tight. But you really only go finger tight on a stud because you're just trying to get the threads engaged or bottomed out in the hole. When you do that and you put the cap on, then you're putting the nut on the top and you're only putting a uh, twisting motion or a torque on the top of the thread and as a result when you have a stud the stress on the stud goes this way the, is, the stud is being stressed outward okay versus a bolt when you put a bolt in you're threading the bolt in the hole you're twisting it around when you get to the bottom the t the head of the uh, bolt or the fastener will reach the cap and as you torque down on it you're taking this fastener and you're winding it up like a spring you're torquing it you're twisting that fastener to get it to tighten in the hole and you have all of these threads that are engaged in order to reach that torque so look at the difference between the two the pros of each the pro of a stud is that you can get a more accurate torque on this this fastener than you will with a bolt the load or the uh, load distribution will be more even so if you have two or if you're doing a cylinder head it'll be easier to distribute the load around all of the studs and ease of use or installation once you put that in and you have to drop the head on or install the main bearing cap you won't have any of the walk so the head won't want to move and the main bearing cap is not going to want to walk back and forth so it's easy for alignment also for reinstallation if you have to if you're a racing application you have to take something off put it back together quickly it's easier to align to a stud one of the cons are cost studs are more costly uh, than, a, than a bolt. They can cost up to, I don't know, let's say 50, 60 bucks for a set of studs versus maybe 10 or 12 bucks for a set of, of the bolts. Now the bolts being the most common, obviously the pro is that they're cheaper and they're easy to get. If you need, if you need a new bolt or you damage it, drop it, you can get a new one. The con, uh, the, con the bad part of that is, again, it's going to be a less accurate torque and since you have so much thread engagement on a bolt, you can run into galling. If you have a problem with the thread inside, something gets in there, it's not clean, you're going to gall the threads and you run damage of ruining it. And that's how a bolt will yank out of there. So people say, well, how do you get more accurate torque? Let's look really closely at a bolt and a stud, and you'll see very quickly why you get more accurate torque out of a stud. And here's the main reason why. You look at the threads, you can see the threads on a stud are a lot finer than the threads on a bolt. So, as you're tightening a bolt, it's going to move a lot faster when you turn a little bit. And with the finer threads, you'll get a more accurate torque because you can turn the, the nut that goes on here will go as you turn it. It'll mo only move a little bit at a time, so the torque will be more accurate once you t start to torque it down. Now I'll start with the crank installation by first, cleaning out all my bearing surfaces here because I don't want any dirt behind the bearing because that can also cause a problem. So I use a lint free cloth to wipe that out and then blow it off. Just to make sure there isn't any dirt behind the bearing. Then I will take each bearing, I will wipe off both surfaces, I'll wipe off the back and I'll wipe off the front and put them all in. Now with all the bearings installed and I wipe them off I can lubricate the bearings. I'm using gloves because you don't want to get the oil from your hands on the bearing surfaces. The, the oil in your hand is acidic and you can cause this to rust and uh, you don't want to do that. So it's better just to work clean. You know me, I'm, I'm cleanliness. 
I'm a bit real big on cleanliness and uh, FM, so I hate that. So I'll, I'm using, uh, to, to lube this, I'm using a PTFE, a professional assembly lube. And I know there's a million of them out there and you can use whatever you like, but this is the PTFE. It has the uh, polytetrafluoroethylene in it, which is a good uh, molybdenum lube. But the PTFE is, is a real good lubricant. So I'm going to put some lube on all of my bearings here and then I'll set my crank in place after I clean the crankshaft, clean it, get it clean off all the journals, all the mains, make sure it's clean before I set it in. One important thing is on the thrust bearing, I want to make sure I get enough lube in here so I can lubricate the thrust surface on both sides. So put lube on the thrust surface on both sides of the bearing. Now I can put my rear main seal in place. I have some RTV in the groove and when you put your seal in the lip, the big lip for the crank goes towards the front of the engine. So I'm just going to set this in place. And I'm going to make sure that when I push this down that I don't squish out too much RTV and I don't want any RTV to really get in this groove. And I don't want it to be squished on the inside of the oil sling groove from the crank, which is good. Now all I have to do is put a light coat of my lube on the seal. And putting on the seal is important because if you don't have any lube on the seal, when the engine starts, the crankshaft could either tear the seal or completely turn it inside the groove. And that will cause a leak. Now the crank is clean. I got the bearings all lubed up. And I set the crank in place very, very carefully. Being careful not to hit the main journals on the studs. It's fairly heavy, so you got to be careful. Just give it a light turn to make sure that it turns well. And uh, it turns very, very smooth. Awesome. Now I can put the main caps on. Put all the caps on, same order. Clean the bearing, put it in the cap, and then I'll set all the caps in place. When you take your block apart, when you take the bearing caps off, you want to keep them in order because they are numbered. Uh, but if you do get them mixed up, you want to make sure, <laughs> you really don't want to do that, but uh, if you do get them backwards, like if you reverse them, the lock notch on the bearing, so the lock notch on the bearing always matches the lock notch on the crank inside the bearing. So you line those up and you very carefully drop these in place, just like that. Now with all the caps in place, give it a quick turn, make sure everything moves still nice and smooth, and it's beautiful. Now I can just tap these bearings into place, tap, tap my caps down. And still turns nice and smooth. Now I can put the nuts on all the studs here. Crank her down. Now a couple notes real quick before I torque these down. Since these are studs and I, uh, I'm using the, uh, the studs and by the way the studs have a six point bolt, uh, nut on each stud and then the back they're 12 point to make clearance for the bearing. Uh, I'm sorry for the rear seal that goes in here. The rear, rear seal holder and for most oil pans. And uh, I'll be using the ARP ultra torque assembly lube that I had that on these threads uh, just before I do the torquing so it's up to 110 foot pounds so let's do it in three steps following the torque sequence first I will go to 60 now I can go to 80 When you're doing torquing, you want to do nice, smooth. Nice, move it nice and smooth. What you don't want to do is you don't want to take your torque and jerk on it real quick. You want to go nice and smooth.
Now I'll finish off at 110. And, as you should do if you're finished torquing down fasteners, always adjust your torque wrench back down to zero. You don't want to leave a preload on your torque wrench. It'll go out of calibration if you leave it under, under torque, under, under load there. Just take it back down to zero. Now let's see if the crank turns. We're up to 110 foot-pounds on all the fasteners. And that rotates nice and easy. Beautiful. Nice and smooth. Last thing I'm going to do is check crankshaft end play. I have my magnetic base on the, on the block there. I have my dial indicator set at zero. And the end play should be three to five thousandths. And... Oops. Let's see that what? Just about four. Just about five. Go the other way back to zero. And try one more time. Yep, about four thousandths. Perfect. All right, so that should answer the burning question. When do you use a stud? When do you use a bolt? I hope that helps you out a little bit, understand the benefits of each one and when you should use it. Next, we're going to be completing the rotating assembly, putting in the pistons. Thanks for stopping by Pizza Garage.